the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical weather bulletin for July 5th. Tropical depression 5 formed earlier today as it approaches and very nearly passing Bermuda now. It hasn't developed into a tropical storm thus far and so it doesn't have a name. Day 187 of the year so far around the world we're still at 31 total storms. Day 35 of Atlantic hurricane season and there is Tropical Depression 5 which is moving off towards the northeast. National Hurricane Center expects it to become a tropical storm in the near future. Day 52 in the Eastern Pacific and two areas of interest are currently active, one of them now a 40% chance. Interesting to note that the National Hurricane Center are a lot more confident with that one, they've up to 70% in the next five days. No systems currently active in the Western Pacific and it looks like it's going to remain a ghost town for the next few weeks maybe, for the foreseeable future at the least. And no systems active either in the Indian Ocean, which is not so much of a surprise at this time of year. So let's take a look at those wide shots then at the Atlantic Ocean. You can see quite clearly uh, Tropical Depression 5, the rotation there. There isn't much to it really. Um, a lot of convection near the center there was earlier today. It's starting to wane a little bit, but you can see how close it is to Bermuda now, a very small system. And also you can see another jet of Saharan dust moving off the coast of Africa there in the latest frames. The Gulf of Mexico looking fairly quiet. You can see a few little thunderstorms there off the coast and inland. The East Pacific, a 40% chance as we've mentioned, probably coming from that vigorous system that's moving over Central America right now. Costa Rica um, and Nicaragua will probably get that system before it moves out into the Western Pacific, the Eastern Pacific proper I should say. That 10% area, a small chance of a tropical depression in the next five days but I really wouldn't expect much. And I would expect even less in the Western Pacific because as you can see it is still extremely bereft of anything that looks like a tropical cyclone, even the ghost of one. Nothing to speak of. Thunderstorms though brewing up across the Philippines and also in parts of China and Japan which are really getting a drenching in this season. In the South Pacific uh, things looking somewhat quiet but you can see there um, a few thunderstorms blowing up just north of Fiji. Um, and in the Indian Ocean you can see there uh, more monsoonal patterns of rainfall over parts of India, particularly further north and also extending towards Myanmar and maybe a little bit of Thailand as well. Sea surface temperatures look like this around the world. This is the Eastern Pacific and you can see that generally we're looking at 28-29 degrees Celsius in the tropical zone, 30 degrees just hanging on off the coast of Mexico. Um, the La Nina effect is still very much there and here to stay. The Atlantic Ocean warming up again uh, off the coast of Florida, still warming and now parts of Louisiana just off the coast there, 30 degrees Celsius, same too for large parts of coastal Cuba and the Bahamas and out towards the open Atlantic warming up as well. The uh, Indian Ocean, uh, you can see some good patches of 30 degrees Celsius waters near the equatorial region and also off the coastal regions of India. And in the Western Pacific, it's pretty much as it's been in the last uh, week or so now. But I'd say the hottest spot there is just in the uh, just off the coast of Hainan in China, in the Gulf of Tonkin. Uh, in the Philippine Sea, still getting its act together, and that little just tiny edge cooler in that little channel there. Sea surface temperature anomalies though show a more clear pattern of what's happening around the world right now. The reds and oranges above average temperatures and the blues well below average and you can see the La Nina churning its way through the eastern and getting towards the central Pacific Ocean. On this day in 1971 it was very busy out there in the tropics with five tropical cyclones active. Arlene was forming in the Atlantic, Carlotta and Denise were almost battling each other in the Eastern Pacific and Category 4 Harriet was about to make landfall, was approaching Vietnam. It was peaking today with winds of 145 miles per hour. Tropical Storm Ivy had also formed and is projected to become a typhoon before striking the coast of Japan. And pictured there is Carlotta and Denise. So the next name on the Atlantic naming list could happen sooner than you think, or maybe not. Edouard 
will be the next name, followed by Faye. In the Eastern Pacific, Christina, National Hurricane Center, think that's going to happen pretty soon. Douglas follows that. In the Central Pacific, the next name on list one is Hone. In the Western Pacific, Sinlaku, who knows when that might arrive. And in the North Indian Ocean, the next name on list one is Gatti. In the Southern Hemisphere, in the Australian region, we've got Imogen next on the list, followed by Joshua. In the Southwest Indian Ocean, the new names for the upcoming season, Alicia and Bongoyo, are the first two names of that. And in the South Pacific, Yolanda is next on the list, and we've got the animation for the season just gone, coming up next week. Check out our new look cyclone tracker on the Force 13 website for the latest up-to-date information. You can also find us, of course, on our YouTube channel, search Force 13, and also on Facebook and Twitter, Force 13 at Force 13 on Twitter for the latest updates. You can also help the project become even better by becoming an Ultimate Fan on YouTube. To see the full list of Ultimate Fan benefits and to join, visit youtube.com forward slash force 13 slash join. With a special thanks to our top supporters this month. You can also check out our growing merch store so you can show Force 13's colours wherever you go. You can also find a link to our Discord server underneath this video in the description.